Greetings YouTube. I made this buckler small sh slash small shield years ago and having looked at it um, for a bit I've come to realize that I didn't do as good a job as I could have and I'm kind of disappointed in myself. So I'd like to improve this thing. Uh, first of all I think these are too long so I'm not going to touch these ends obviously I'll, I'll cut the other ends are just got nuts on them so I'll figure out what length I want them and I'll whack them off and I'll reuse those uh, lengths as bolts in the future but yeah I think I want to want these to make these shorter they're just too long um, uh, another thing is this is currently set up so it has the grip that way I'm gonna see if I actually have the whole spacing the same because I think I do I may rotate that handle 90 degrees and make that so that the shield goes this way like this because so I'm not sure which is going to be better this or this and eh, maybe this still maybe I keep that I don't know but that's not the big thing it, it, you know shortening this that's a wicked easy job no I'm disappointed in this because this is aluminum diamond plate which looks very very cool but frankly isn't particularly strong. It looks good, but it isn't particularly strong. But for melee weapons, it isn't bad. Um, you're going to have a hard time getting through this with your average hand weapon. Uh, missile weapons are going to have no difficulty going through this. You even, even relatively, uh, even like standard hunting bows um, with like a with a target point. I don't think a broadhead would go through this, but a target point is going to punch a hole through this thing. Maybe not enough to kill the guy behind it, but enough to make him make, make him a very unhappy. Um, no, what I'm upset about is the edge, because this isn't thick. Again, it's 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 aluminum diamond plate. It's not thick. So what I'm going to do is I want to put edging on this, and I'm going to use bed frames. I'm going to take bed frames, cut myself some lengths, take four of them, make make this into a a rimmed. Uh, design and I'm probably going to use pop rivets to hold it together so it'll have a nice sleek look. I have numerous bed frames to work with so that's not an issue and uh, it should be a fairly straightforward design. Now, I'm not actually going to go and do nice neat 45 degree eight corners like I'm not a frame framer. I would don't think I would be able to get them to fit the way I want them to fit. So I'm just going to do straight across here and then I'll have a notch out of the side so that um, since I am going to probably keep this vertical now that I look at it, I want this top to be have uh, solid, and this side here can have a notch cut out of it to get around uh, uh, that issue because it's going to have a I'll have to have a little uh, cut out here so that both of these come up to meet at the edge because they'll have they'll be L shaped, so I have to have worry about the configuration in the back. But that'll be something that you won't see. But I want this to be one solid contiguous piece on the top and the bottom. So. Um, I also am going to have to figure out where I want the holes because um, I'm going to want to, uh, again, pop rivet it together. And if I can, yeah, I can't really do that, can I? I'm going to say I would like to get them to reinforce each other at the corners. So what I might do is I might have reinforcement at the corners where you can't see it, make some L brackets and have the L brackets going this way on the two pieces uh, so that each corner is held together. This and this will be come together this way as well as being bolted to this because I don't want the things to separate and a solid piece that is held at each corner is going to have greater strength. So I'll probably do that. Um, and I'll probably put those L brackets on the inside just because of aesthetics. You know, I mean, you won't see them except for like the, the little tiny rivet heads and they're not gonna be overly noticeable. So yeah. I think I can make this much better, make this a little less absurd. Probably, I'm going to, again, this is just pure sort of threaded rod. So I can just, you know, those are not pure threaded rod? Oh, that makes my life a little more difficult. Those are actual bolts. Why the hell did I do that? Well, that was dumb. Holy crap, I'm dumb. I didn't use threaded rod. Well, guess what? I'm making those into threaded rod. <laughs> I'm backing those puppies out and I'm cutting them off that way. I'm not remaking these points. That's a pain in the butt. So yeah, I don't, why the hell did I use bolt, bolts instead of threaded rod? Wow, that must have really been in my early career because I've gotten much smarter than that. Threaded rod is the way to go, folks. You can make bolts of any size. 
and you can get yourself into clearance spots you can't get with bolts because you can just put a nut on, on either side you know it makes, it's very convenient you only have to have like this much clearance in that space to get a nut in there and, and have it tighten up so yeah that was dumb wow i'm disappointed with myself but it does mean that it'll actually be a bolt when i'm done now won't it it's already got a head on it so take this apart a bit back this out i'll have to put a nut on the inside so that i can then figure out the distance i want and then i can mark them all cut them off and uh call it good but yeah boy that was that was not smart on my part hmm i'll well, live and learn so first of all i'm going to take these off completely because <laughs> if i'm going to be working on this thing on the edges on putting steel rims on this i don't i don't want these in my way they are they are quite pointy and quite dangerous <laughs> they just are too long um so let's see if we can make this buckler not only uh look better but be a heck of a lot stronger here we have all of the lengths I'm going to need of angle iron. And uh, these are the two, obviously these are long sides, two short sides, and these are going to be the brackets that will be joining them together when they are like that. They'll be coming in those corners um, like this. Like that. I obviously haven't deburred anything yet, I've just cut them. And I've decided, what the heck, I'm actually going to try putting 45s on this thing. What the hell, you know, I haven't had enough challenges in my life, so let's try that one. So now it's going to take some very careful layout to make sure I have the right pieces in the right spots with the right angles. Yes. Um, so now some layout, and I'm going to use my favorite little uh, empire uh, square here. And I'll use that to help me do the layouts, and then it's more cutting. I'm already kitted up in my safety gear. I've got my goggles on, and my heavy hearing protection, and my apron, and my cut fruit glove on my left hand. Um, so, yeah. So we're all set on that. So let's do some layout lines. Uh, make sure we have the right layout lines in the right spots. Like for example, this one, I'm going to want to make sure that that is going to be on the inside that will be the side you see so i'm going to put the 45s on this corner these corners not on that one because i don't i don't care if you can see that you can't see that when i'm done it's going to be on the inside you're never going to never know never know it's there um all i care about is the stuff that you're going to see on this side and uh and then once i get those cut then i can start laying out where i want the holes for the fasteners and i'm thinking on these short ones i could probably get away with two Seriously, I'm, I'll put one, you know, a certain, I'll, I'll figure out what length, how far I want to go in, and then I'll put two on these, I don't think I need more than two, and on these, one, two, three, probably three, I don't think I need more than three, I really don't, and of course that there will be two holes in each of these to make the, to make that right angle transition from one side to the other. Alrighty. These are going to be the biggest pain in the drill, really, when I'm done, after I've got to deburred and everything. Drilling the holes in these, that's going to be the pain. I'll, I'll, I'll have these done and I'll have these mounted onto the face before I go about figuring out where I want the holes to be these in. Because this is the piece that's the least, is easiest to replace um, if I screw it up. So I want to have these match these, you know, match these things. Uh, but they're going to be the biggest pain to, to drill because they're so darn small. You know what I mean? They're just so small. Small parts like this are a pain to drill. Big stuff like this, this is easy to drill because I have lots of places I can clamp, you know? Okay. Um, so let's do some layout, figure out what I want to do as far as which corners have to get knocked off. And then some more cutting. So we're getting there. Uh, two of these pieces, this one and this one, these two right here, these two pieces there, are 100% complete. And I am currently working on that corner. Then I'm gonna to have to take off these two and drill the corner holes for the support brackets. And I have one of the support brackets right here. And again, I have to do this really funky kind of drill setup because that's a small part. This really should be done in a mill. Let me, sorry, let me turn it off. Um, this should be done in a mill. I don't have a mill. So this is what I'm doing. So I've got this holding the part to a wooden block and I have this holding the whole thing down, and then I just drill it. It's, it's a little janky, I know that, I'm not happy about it, but there's enough mass here, nothing should move on me. And uh, it's the only way I'm gonna be able to get this drilled. 
And I've been using this block both as a spacer here at the drill press and also on my vise because uh, I've been trying to clamp, I have to clamp the thing with the L brackets in place, which means it's hard for my vise to grab it. And I've been using this block as a spacer so that lets the, 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 the vise to, to grab the part while I, so I can hold it and drill it. Because I've been drilling the holes through the aluminum with a hand drill. In fact, I've been using a Ryobi drill, which I'm really, really happy with. I picked this up at a yard sale for 20 bucks. I had never tried a Ryobi. It's got a built-in uh, level, which is I need for a future project. So really happy with that one so far. Been using it for this entire project. Um, but I've been using that for the aluminum because I don't really need to drill the aluminum here. It's soft metal. I can just do it in the vise. Um, so no. So now it's time to drill this one, install it, and then this is never coming loose again. Once I get this in place, it's it's permanent. The four corner supports are now installed and riveted fully in place. So this is now one contiguous piece so I could remove all the contain all the fasteners with from this and remove this and put it back in there. I'm gonna burn there. Um, and I'm not going to be doing that because these actually would be in the way. But the point is is that it is conceivable that you could do that if you really wanted to. Uh, so what the next stage is is now I'm going to be cutting the fasteners I need, uh, I'll take a big burring, big burring tool to that, um, cutting the fasteners I need, making bolts, and then putting each, it, it, putting in like the ones that have nothing in them, removing those, replacing them, and then just working my way around until I've got all of those perimeter fasteners in place, two here, and I decided to go with four on the long sides. So you got two in the short sides, uh, four in the long sides, so that's in total of uh, 12 I've got to take care of. Um, so I have to figure out what length I need for a fastener. It's not going to be very long. It's probably going to be about that long. I have to actually figure that out. Then I have to cut them up. And I'm actually going to be reusing some of these. These are scavenged. Um, these are actually from casters from a really, really cheap little desk I got for nothing. And I took it apart. I took picked it up and took it apart because it had square stock tubing and some other fasteners I can use. And these were what held the casters in place. So I should be able to get at least one fastener out of each of these uh, for my little project here today. And that means three quarter twenty threads. So whenever I can get three th free th free threads, I'll take free threads. Um, means I just save more money on fasteners. Alrighty. So figure out how long I need them and then start working on replacing all of them. And then the last stage to this, we'll be figuring out how long these need to be and hoping I have more nuts. Because it occurred to me that I'm not 100% sure I have more 5 8 nuts. So let's hope I've got some more 5 8 nuts getting around because I'm cutting off these ends here, uh, which are currently being used. Did I use carriage bolts on these or something? I don't know what the heck I used on those. But. Again, why I use those instead of threaded rods is beyond me, but I did. Uh, but I guess we live and learn. Okay, let's start making a whole bunch of fasteners. Once again, I'd like to thank my past self because I just saved myself a whole bunch of work. See that fastener right there? That fastener is exactly the length I need for this project. I open up a container of, uh, that I keep, uh, on one of these things right here. I got two of these. But I keep most of my fasteners in because it's handy to carry around the shop. Um, and uh, I was looking for these and I found them. But in the process, I noticed I had these and these I had scavenged from uh, somebody gave away two shelving units. And I've already used part of that, like that one of those shelving units is right, the shelves is right there. This support is from another one of those shelving units. Um, the Wasteland uh, Stinger is part of that shelving unit. Uh, there's a number of different projects that have all been born out of those shelving units, and these were holding them together, at least one of them. And they're quarter 20s, they have a square nut. I haven't actually found a use for the square nuts yet. I will eventually, probably, because they are kind of cool looking. But for this project, I didn't want the square nuts. I wanted these cap nuts. Um, and once again, if any of you out there are looking for to get yourself some bolts and you're looking for an online source, I would recommend Bolt Depot. I was super, super happy with their service. Great price, I paid 27 bucks for 200 cap nuts and I got it in two days. So yeah, real happy with them. Um, 
So this is now all taken care of with the trim. So uh, now I got to figure out how long I want the points to be. And I do find I found some more nuts, so I'm go I'm good on the nuts uh, nut uh, front. I also like the fact that these fasteners they have a very large head, so that's good here. I don't have to use any washers or anything. It really pulled it together nicely. I didn't have to worry about that on the outside because it's you know steel. So this is now thoroughly secured in place. It is not going anywhere, and it is far far more rigid. Prior to the installation of this. I could actually flex this short end. Now, obviously, you could flex the long end. That's 20 something inches. I think it's 22 inches. Um, but even if I put an, an object here, I could push it down and I could watch it flex. Now, can't flex it anymore. <laughs> this is definitely uh, going to be providing all the strength that you need uh, for, for uh, keeping this thing nice and solid, as well as providing a lot of uh, protection from inward coming blows. Uh, this is not going to provide you as much protection from anything other than melee weapons because this is just aluminum. It's not going to stop any kind of a missile. Even like hunting arrows could probably go through this thing, though they are going to be significantly uh, slowed down to the point where they're probably not going to hurt you unless they hit you directly in the hand. Uh, but yeah, you're not going to be able to stop these, uh, stop much with this aluminum as far as uh, projectiles goes. It's never really intended for that. Diamond plate is, is mostly for building things or for steps and things like that. Uh, but yeah, okay, now I'm going to figure out how long I want my points to be, cut those puppies off, and it's reassembly time. Here is the final project. I decided to go with three inches on these. I think that's a much better length than what I had there last time. The length I had last time was kind of absurd. Um, so I did that. I did not change the points whatsoever. I thought about polishing them up a little bit, like, ah, screw it. Again, it's a post-apocalyptic vibe. If they got a little bit of burr on them, let them have a little bit of burr on them. Um, and I end up with four bolts. So I have four bolts left that I can use to do something with. Who knows what? We'll find that out. Um, then I got to use my Thorns, Thorson dog bone, a wrench I don't get to use often, but it's very handy. I love this thing. Um, highly recommend it. It's not going to replace all of your open-end wrenches because these this is a much bigger object, but it's still very handy to have all of those different bits in one hand. Um, so yeah, this is just a lovely project. I really have... Uh, I'm very happy with it. I'm glad I uh, decided to revisit this and add this uh, border in, reinforce the corner. So again, this, this steel uh, channeling is one contiguous piece now. It is connected together. Um, I'm using these cap nuts. And I like this, this, the shiny metal against this and against that. I think it's a nice accent. Um, I like the, the contrast. I think it's nice. Uh, so uh, yes, I'm very happy with this project. Um, I'm glad I did an upgrade. It's much heavier than it was. <laughs> but for a strong person, it wouldn't be an issue. I'm not strong enough, strong enough to wield this thing successfully in combat, but uh, it is usable, and uh, that's what that's what matters. I didn't change anything in the back whatsoever. It's exactly the same as it was. Um, it's just that the, there are no bolt heads here. They're just nuts on the inside. Um, and of course, you've got the fasteners from there. Ah. There we go. Um, so yeah, thrilled that I decided to revisit this. Um, and i am been thinking about actually starting to get rid of some of my older projects, the ones that I can either cannot reuse because I just there's just too much work to take them apart and try to salvage the parts. Um, I just that this just wouldn't be enough left over for salvage because I'd clear up some room for some projects that I prefer. Um, do some upgrades in the ones I've got. This is the second upgrade I've done recently. The last one was for changing a handle on the Wasteland uh, Ripper. Um, so yeah. Improving the, some of the designs I, I, I created in the past because I think I'm better at what I do now than I was then. Alrighty, so thank you for being here for this build. I hope you had fun and hope that you will come back for the next one. Um, if you don't follow me on DeviantArt and Instagram, you should. DeviantArt is the permanent home of the stills for these videos um, and these builds. And Instagram is where I uh, post all kinds of stuff about builds, salvage, bargains, and of course, cute cat pictures. And who doesn't love cute cat pictures? Alrighty, so time to go outside and get some stills, and then this project is done.